All right, so last week was a bit emotional. <laughs> uh, no other way of saying that. Um, but I'm still, honestly, I'm still processing that entire experience. Uh, if you want to watch the video, I'll leave a thingy up here. But yeah, still processing that. But I wanted to talk about something different this week. So probably about a month ago now, I made a video recap or updating you all on uh, the video that I made years ago uh, talking about how I did this fast because I was searching and looking for God. I did the seven day, what I called seven mountain fast, searching and looking for God. And uh, basically I wanted to experience something in those seven days and nothing happened. I didn't experience um, anything. But I get a lot of questions about that video and that fast specifically and what it did. Now, because I didn't, I didn't experience anything, but there was a lot that came out of that seven day fast, that seven day period. Uh, during that period, I, I read through the whole uh, New Testament again, various parts of the Old Testament with just different lenses, uh, found a lot of things, um, saw a lot of things differently. And then I kind of, I don't really know if I mentioned this part in that last video or that video that I made years ago, but um, yes, I didn't experience, or no, I didn't experience anything, and I walked out of that, and I was like, nothing happened. I gained a new understanding, a new insight, so in some ways, it's like, okay, that happened. Um, but there was one part that I kind of, I don't think I talked about, which was, I walked out, I came out of that fast, um, with a bunch of, I don't, oh man. I came out of that fast with a lot of, uh, questions for me. Um, questions not just philosophically, but questions that are really tough to answer. And I want to talk about those questions. And these questions have to do with uh, experiences that I have had in my life that I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how to answer that. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. Um, and it's like, all right, you know, I believe something and then I, well, I thought I believed something and I found out I didn't believe it and that it was like all adopted by, you know, my parents and upbringing and all this kind of stuff. But like, I still look back at certain experiences and I'm like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think of that. So I've actually written a lot of them down. Um, and I'm going to talk about each of them in, in these videos. Um, and the first experience that I want to talk about is, um, seeing firsthand, uh, praying for somebody, and essentially seeing a blind eye open. Or they, they, they weren't blind after I prayed for them. Basically, the story goes like this. I, I went to ministry school in California for three years, and um, I interned my third year for, uh, it was a superna supernatural school of ministry, uh, and which basically means that they just incorporated the gifts of the spirit, aka prophecy, healing, um, various gifts of prophe prophecy, uh, the, you know, fivefold gifts, uh, their non uh, cessation and cessationist theology, uh, meaning that they still think all of those people are alive today, and there's various of them and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the guy that I interned for was the. Um, leader of the healing rooms uh, at this church. And so every single Saturday, I would go and pray for people. And there would be Saturdays where um, people would come in and they'd have like a sheet that, they, that you'd fill out and they're like, okay, are you in pain? Where are you in pain? Scale of one to 10, where is the pain? You know, do you have any like, you know, ailments or la da 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 da. And you know, a lot of people would come in and just be like, I have level 10 pain here. Um, or, you know, this part of my back is hurting or upper back or this and that, or can you pray for a surgery or whatever? And a lot of times with the pain, like I, I can't even tell you how many people that I prayed for where they've come in with like a level 10 pain, be close to tears. I pray for them. Then they're in tears again, but they say that they feel better. I'm like, okay. You know, I think I, I look at that. I looked at that then and I was like, wow, that's incredible. And I look at it now and I'm like, how do, how do I know? How do they know? You know? Um, it's, and, and it's funny because it's not funny, but it's, it's, it was a problem in the healing rooms because what they found was that when you would pray for somebody with pain, oftentimes what would happen is they would leave without pain, but then three or four weeks later, the pain would come back. And so, uh, there was this course that I was actually trained to teach, uh, called walking in God's best. And it was a course that was 
in these uh, he healing rooms and it was teaching people the, the theology to hold on to their healing um, and to, to maintain the healing so that they could be healed in the long term and not just after a week or two the pain would come back. Um, and so very interesting stuff, very, very interesting stuff. So I'd seen a lot of things that honestly, it's just kind of left my memory. I remember round about like this person or that person or this story. And it was just like pain gone here, pain gone there. Cool. A lot of pain leaving. Um, and then, you know, stuff that I look back and I'm like, that's not, none of that's really, it's not exactly definitive. Um, you know, that this is wow. But within that seven day fast, this was a story that kept coming up. Um, that one day this, this girl comes in with a friend. She didn't think she didn't come in for prayer. Really her It was her friend. That was something was going on with her friend. And, um, me and the person that I was with praying for people were just like, all right, well, do you need prayer for anything? Can we pray for you? Um, and she's like, you know what? Yeah. Why not? Uh, she's like my eyes, I guess. Now she wasn't wearing glasses. She walked in, she could see, but she was like, my eyes are really, really bad. And today I only put one contact in and she's like, the one contact is in this eye. I can only see out of this eye. I can't see out of this eye. Everything is super crazy blurry. Um, so I can't see. So she's like, you know, basically what the heck, like just pray for it, see what happens. So, you know, we do what we normally did. I prayed a prayer that I normally do. And, uh, she has her eyes closed. And then as I'm praying, um, she opens her eyes, her jaw drops. Um, she starts, she bursts into tears. Um, and she almost like lets out this, it's like a, not a yelp, but just like, you know, one of those and like covers her mouth. She's crying and we're like, what just happened? Um, and so, you know, we keep kind of praying and we're just like, okay. And then, uh, you know, I ask her like, what happened? And the eye that had the contact in it that she could see perfectly fine out of was now the eye that was incredibly blurry um, and she can't see out of it. And the eye that did not have the contact in it was now cleared and she can see out of that eye. So she's like, I got to go home and take this contact out because I can't see with the eye with the contact in it. Um, and I, I, I think back at that story, I remember that day and I'm just like, what was that? How, how does that happen? Like, I don't, I haven't, I have yet to find any sort of explanation for that other than, um, some sort of energy or power or something may have touched her. You know, I have no, I have no clue. I have no idea what to do with that, that information and that, and that story. Um, and, and maybe you all, maybe, you know, the atheists or the, um, you know, the scientifically minded people that follow me and follow this channel. Maybe you have some sort of idea. I have never heard of that happening. Um, I didn't ever see her again. Um, I didn't ever, you know, I, there was no follow up. Um, but you know, she, there was no denying her shock. And of course, yes, there's always the possibility this girl could have been lying, this girl could have been looking for attention, whatever. But I'm a pretty intuitive person. I always have been. I've always been able to read people pretty well. And uh, I'm, there wasn't any red flags going up that this person was some sort of fraud. Now, maybe she was that good. I don't know, but I don't think so. Because um, I didn't... It's just hard for me to, to look back at that story and um, think that that was, that was somehow faked. Uh, I, I don't know though. I, I don't know. So that was one of those things, that was one of those stories where I came out of that fast and I was like, this is one of those things that I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. But to me, it was one of the things, one of the stories that I'm gonna be telling uh, that was enough for me to say, I think I need to keep going. I, keep, I think I need to keep searching something out. Whatever that could have been. Let's say, you know, there was either the, the, the possible reality that it was a lie, it was a fake, she was a fraud, whatever. 
I, I heavily doubt this, though. And then there's the other possible reality that there was something more. There was something more involved. Um, and I'm like, this to me, the, 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 this outweighed this. Like the doubt for her being like, yeah, she was probably a fraud did not even come close to the weight that like, I think there could be something here. And of course, maybe that's some sort of like trauma related me wanting something to be real. Um, but I don't, I, the more I've, the, over the years, it's still stuck with me over the years of, you know, me figuring out, you know, what even to call myself like an agnostic atheist or agnostic or whatever. Um, I, I, that's one of the stories that I continually think about. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. I have no idea. And, and this is enough for me to want to keep searching these things out, um, to keep searching this out. So that's, uh, one of the stories that, that is, is, has been, I guess, keeping me on this journey to, to put it in a weird way. Um, among many, among many stories. So this is story number one. I thought this would be a good kick, kick off. <laughs> to telling these stories. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to do with that. I have no idea what it is. There's other, um, as a lot of you know, um, as I've shared, I am a licensed massage therapist. Um, so I've seen pain leave people by <laughs> the power of, um, you know, touch. And um, I've seen, you know, people will come back in a couple of weeks and the pain will still be there. And it's like, I see that all the time in my practice. Um, and you know, the same thing goes for energy healers as well, uh, that are, you know, licensed therapists and they do energy healing, um, or they practice, you know, some sort of other modality, like, ah, man, I can't even think of the healing modality. It's like native to New Zealand or even from fascial release. Um, there's, there's incredible power in, uh, touch, light touch, heavy touch, whether that be deep tissue, deep pressure, fascial release. Uh, some sort of emotional release. Um, you know, I look back at a lot of, you know, things that I experienced in the church now knowing what I know as a massage therapist. And I'm like, that's energy work. <laughs> that's energy work. Um, even the way that people are touched when being prayed for, I'm like, you don't even know it. You might, you're, you might actually be doing a, you know, a very light fascial release. Um, and you're, you're focusing energy on that, which would be considered energy work, which there is efficacy efficacy to and there is scientific backing for energy work by the way um which i find very interesting um but so you know my my brain is still wrapping my head around that particular story though in a, in a lot of ways um because i'm like how i wasn't touching her eyeballs like what what was it so yeah that's that I, i'm gonna keep sharing these stories gonna keep keep telling these things and telling, you know, my questions. Cause I think the reason I've held on to these stories, I don't have the answers and I've, I've been wanting to have the answers before I tell these stories. And it's just like, I don't have the answers. <laughs> so, uh, and you guys are along for the journey. So that's that, um, more to come, more stories like this to come of some crazier, some not as crazy. Um, but still they've kept me questioning and wondering, what the fuck? Honestly, like, this is crazy. So, um, yeah, stay tuned, like, subscribe, share, and uh, I'll see you misfits in the next one. Peace! You had all my praises convinced from the first game.